Last year, Document360 contacted me asking me to review their software. I said sure, and I created a 16 minute video that I'll link in the description so you can bring yourself up to date on what Document360 is and why it's such a unique software for the business owner. But this year they contacted me again and said, Marty, we've updated a few things, we've integrated some AI and we'll love it if you could jump back inside the software and let us know what you think on video of all the new features. Because I was impressed last time, I thought, let's do this. So in this video, I'm going to be reviewing Document360 2.0 and I'm going to be going over the redesigned dashboard, the intuitive block editor, the customization centralized hub, the analytics advancements, the instant sync integrations and Eddie, their generative AI. If you have any questions about Document360, go ahead and drop them below. I tend to reply within a few minutes to a couple of hours. And if you could tap the like button, it will be greatly appreciated. For those of you who don't know what Document360 is, it's an AI powered knowledge base for customers and teams. It works very similar to general documents combined with, let's say, your computer folder and files, but kind of like a powerhouse where you can do all sorts of things with formatting, with looking at analytics and it kind of acts like a website as well because you can get your pages inside document 360 indexed on google which means you get more traffic more eyeballs and you don't need to do any of the typical technical side of things because document 360 has it all for you. Here we are inside Document 360 and let's start off with the dashboard. So right in front of you, what you'll have is your main dashboard on the left and this navigates through the documentation, the APIs, the content tools and the drive. You can also add your own widgets and quickly get to the analytic. But on the main dashboard in the center of the screen, we have a snapshot of all the articles we've uploaded and we can categorize them by date as well as who those articles are assigned to, reminders and feedback, and then an analysis of all the articles if you've got any broken links. You can also switch over to the overview tab, which gives you more detailed information about the project overview, like recent logins, team accounts, readers, and all of that good stuff. What's nice as well is over every single tab, you will see a two little icons next to the title. The first icon will take you to the documentation page on how you can use this specific feature. And I would strongly recommend going through the documentation because there is a lot to Document360, but it is incredibly powerful. And then the second is the video, which opens up in a nice little pop-up, very clean, very easy to understand, clear audio, and very specific. You can also switch between your projects by clicking on your name and then toggling. And if you want to open up the public view, just click on this icon and there you have it. And remember, you can send this link to your customers, to your teammates, or even for yourself so you can quickly search and navigate through all of your pages or articles or documentation. But ultimately what you'll see here is just a really clean, sleek, professional looking interface that is really quite intuitive. The next feature I want to cover is the intuitive block editor. This is actually really good and you're going to see exactly why. So let me show you how the block editor works. First, we'll head over to documentation and we'll go ahead and do create and do a new article. We're gonna jump over to ChatGPT and just ask it to write us a quick article. We'll go ahead and grab the title, paste it in the article name, and then we'll grab the rest of the article, choose a category, so we'll pull it into our blogs folder and do create. And now we're in the editor side of things. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste in this text. And I already covered this in the previous video I did, but this is what it used to look like, or still looks like, but is more the older feature. What we want to do is we want to go to the article settings and then go to editor type and we're going to select block. Do yes and then do save. Now the interface has changed for us and this is where it gets really nifty. We can highlight any part of the text paragraphs, words, and this little pop-up bubble will show. We can highlight things if we want to. We can highlight a group of text here, click on the comment section, we can do at, and then we can tag our teammates and give them little notes in the exact area we need them. So add more clarity here and then do send. And now that's highlighted. So when our team members go in, they hover over the text, they click it and bang, you can see the comment is there. But what What's even cooler about this is that teammate can then reply and saying, 
done and now you've got a whole history of feedback for specific areas of the text. How cool is that? Another great thing about the block editor is we can use commands or shortcut to add content in. So if we are typing away on our computer, instead of using our hand to move to the mouse area and to add, insert things, we can simply do slash. And now we can use our arrows to navigate between all the things we can include. So let's say you want an attachment. We can just do enter and then we've got an attachment field. If you wanted to add something here, let's just do slash. And we could maybe add in a checklist and we can do that, hello. And it will just keep on adding to the checklist. Or if we do a slash again, we can actually start typing and say we wanted to add some code here, we'll start typing code and it will automatically filter to the code that we wanted to add in. As you can imagine, this is a really intuitive way of adding things into your articles really fast. We're basically eliminating the need of our mouse by using the shortcut. And whilst you think, oh, you know, moving your hand to your mouse, doesn't take that long. If you are consistently doing it and you are constantly writing articles, constantly doing documentation and and and, it can actually build up. So this is streamlining and making things really convenient for us. And I like that. Let's move over to the customization side of things when it comes to design and branding and all of that stuff. In our left sidebar navigation, we're going to go to settings. And then under knowledge base site, we're going to click the drop down menu and go to customize site. Now, all of these options here do some level of design or customization for either our website or our article design. So for example, if we wanted to add our logos, we can do just by clicking change and we can add the URL of our logo if it's on one of our other websites or somewhere else. So it just automatically imports. We can change our brand colors, our font families and our overall layout of our pages just by doing one click. If we wanted to change the domain name, we can do but just by adding in our custom domain and they've got full documentation on how to do. Another really nice touch is the redirect rule. So if we've got an old blog URL that's still receiving traffic, we can add that URL from location one, so it will automatically be sent to location two. And you'll find this becoming really helpful once your databases become quite large. We can then change the article settings so we can. So before I start jumping around in that and playing around with things, let me show you what the overall design of our article pages look like by default. So on our left, we have all of the articles that's in inside of a folder or a category, and that's on the left. And then we've got the main content in the center. And on the right, we've got the contents, which is all of the headings inside the article, which by the way, this sort of formatting Google love. So here, let's say we didn't want the print button showing. So the print button is located right here. So let's go ahead and just toggle, show share button, show print button. And now that's been updated for us. So if we go back here, refresh, that's now gone. Let's say we didn't want to show the table of content or related articles or what's new, then we would just toggle them, go back here, refresh, and now that's all gone for us. So you can see we can customize the layout of everything just by toggling some of these buttons. But if that is too simple for you and you like to get into the custom CSS and you want to change some JavaScript for the interactivity and what's not, go into custom CSS and JavaScript and you can add your own code snippet right here. So if you want to change call out styles, you can do this just like so. Let's move on to the advanced analytic. On the left sidebar, we'll scroll all the way to the bottom where it says analytic. And this shows a super broken down version of what's going on with all of our articles, individual articles, and this sort of engagement each article's getting. So this is demo data right now, but from 100 articles, it's shown that we've had 500 views across all the articles. We've had 450 people read, 200 likes, 50 dislikes, and which articles are most read. Then we can scroll down and we can see even more data, like who contributed to these. So which of our teammates are doing the best written articles for us that are getting the most engagement. So perhaps we can reward them. We can see where all of our viewers are coming from and these top categories people keep navigating to. If we can't 
optimize our articles, we are losing out on a lot of potential business, the ability to truly help our customers, and ultimately just getting a better idea of what our colleagues and our customers need. You can see how many people are searching, how often they're searching, and the main keywords that they are searching for. So that's basically people coming to the front view of your website, entering in a search term, and then you're going to see those keywords found here. Then you've got all the feedback. So you've got overall, does this need more information? It's difficult to understand, etc. How many links are broken? Or if they're external links, or if they're being redirected, all here. How often people are trying to log in to specific URLs. And then if you have a widget and you've got people creating tickets with you, it shows all of that data as well. This is super convenient. And I really like this sort of information because it's clear, concise, and it just helps us develop what we're already doing. And when we have data, it allows us to make smart decisions. For more of the techie individuals, I thought you'd like to know that you can now sync your articles directly with Zendesk and GitHub. So if you are creating articles on these other platforms, you can sync everything in real time. And the overall setup is pretty simple. So all you would need to do is connect your subdomain, add an admin email, and then connect your API token. And then once that's configured, every single time you make updates inside Zendesk or GitHub, that will be automatically pushed to Document360. You can find API keys under the API documentation just by doing new API, and then you can take it from there. Finally, let's talk about the latest generative AI friend that Document360 have created called Eddy. To get started with Eddy, you first want to head over to your settings tab and then click on all features. You'll see one new addition called Eddie. Go ahead and click that. And then under AI assistive search, you can toggle this on. You can find more information about Eddie by clicking the learn more option and all the different things you can do. You've got an AI writer, an AI SEO description generator, AI title recommender, summarizer, assisted search. Basically, anything you can do with more traditional AI writing tool, you can do this with Eddy. Unfortunately, I can't show you the full capabilities of Eddy because I don't have access to it. However, you should have access to it if you decide to sign up. So this is how to navigate to Eddy to activate all of those settings. So first, you would go to the knowledge base portal, navigate to settings, AI features, and then Eddie. So you'll go to the settings icon and then click on AI features and then you can see Eddie here. You will then have an option called AI writer and all you need to do is toggle that. So it will look similar to this and all you'll need to do is toggle it. And then to start using it, all you'll need to do is go to your documentation, click on an article and you need to make sure you're in the block editor. You would highlight some text and the Eddie icon would show up right here. And then all you'll do is simply say, expand this text or add more clarity or reword it and it will do just that. Perhaps in the future we'll come back and give Eddie a full review but for now I'll just go over the only option I can do right now which is the assisted search. Now on the front side of your documentation you will see a ask Eddie button inside the search bar. So if you click on ask Eddie you want to talk to Eddie like a human. So you would simply say a question about the overall topic that you're after. So if you want to know more about what Eddie is, just say, explain what Eddie is and do enter. And just like that, it does that for us. Or how about how to use document 360? Basically what Eddie is doing is it's going through all of our articles inside our documentation and it's analyzing it and then giving us a clear concise answer based on the information that we feed it to answer our questions as well as possible. So. Just like this, it's given us 10 steps on how to use Document 360. So what are my thoughts of Document 360? Well, they've only gotten better from last year. I think the interface is clean, sleek, and intuitive to use. I don't think it will take you a lot of time to start learning the ins and outs of Document 360 because 
there isn't that many things to actually click on. Once you initially jump over the configuration of everything, actually using it is like using a folder on your computer. I really like the block editor, having the shortcut at hand so we don't need to keep on moving our hand to our mouse and interrupting the flow of things. I can definitely see is the future of how we are going to be creating articles. It just streamlines everything and when you can combine that with AI, although we didn't get the chance to properly review Eddie, but if Eddie performs anything like what we've just seen here today, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a win when it comes to streamlining our content creation. I'm also a really big fan of the analytic. The way it's all broken down for us without us actually needing to connect anything is super convenient. If we don't have data of what's going on with our assets, we cannot make smart decisions. Ultimately, we're always just guessing and hoping that we know our target base well enough to make good decisions. But we can take all the guessing work out just by reviewing the analytic and they've included a lot of key analytics that we need to make those smart decisions. Would I recommend Document 360 2.0? Yes, I absolutely would. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.